Hello everyone on the internet and thanks for tuning in. I'm Ryukiva of Ryukiva Toku. And welcome to another episode of Toku Bros. I'm Dragon Zero of the Tokusatsu Media Center. And I am the Winter Cosplayer. Yosha Lucky! Tama Q Q Q! Tama 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 Q Q Q! How I did not miss this, but yeah, as my very illustrious co-hosts do say disastrously today we will be talking about uh uchu sentai q ranger more take it down okay wrong theory but yeah <laughs> but nevertheless so just to kick start it off let's start with you kiba what the hell did you think of it right straight up this is in my top five this is a series that i absolutely loved i mean i know i mean this is the thing like i know it kind of got a lot of fan hate but for me, I just connected on it with so many levels. I connected on it with so many levels. I connected on it on so many levels. I'm just like, I'm really actually excited to do this review today. Uh, Zeron, what did you think of Q-Ranger? It's overall? one of my top ten. I, cause there's definitely a lot more Sentai that are better than this. But it's definitely a way better show than what Ninja or Jojo was beforehand, you know? Because this is like the space sequel, and I genuinely enjoyed watching like how the like see like ten warriors basically work together to fight the evil dark matter, and I it's like amazing, man. And I, I enjoy the villains, though. Like some of the characters also got some great development, you know. We also got a lot of good characters and stuff, so we'll get to that. I mean, I will agree. Like, I absolutely love the progression, but just two two quick things in reply. Firstly, it was twelve, even though it's Q for nine, yeah. it was actually yeah. twelve. And the yeah. thing is, like, yeah, you you kind of ratted it out compared to Ninja or something. But the, ironically, when people compare. Uh, Aka Ninja and Shishi Red, though. Is it Shishi Lucky. Red? Yeah, Shishi Red. Like, um, yeah, obviously our guy Lucky. Yeah, I can see the comparisons and obviously I can see, yeah, like I can actually understand to an extent why people might have been hacked off at this. Like, I'm looking at cosplayer's face right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I can understand why people might not like it, but for me, I just connected on it with uh, so many levels. I mean, uh, how, yeah. How like, about you, Ryu? Um, how about you, Winter Cosplay? What did you think of the series? I'm going to sum it in two words. Busy. Definitely. Forgetful. <sighs> no. But, okay, explain yourself. But, but, I'll let you we'll explain get... yourself. No, no, what, do you want... Yeah, explain do you yourself. Yeah. Okay, so the forgetful part, I honestly don't remember the, the, the general story, so that when we get to that, we'll get to that. But when it comes to... Uh, the whole busy, like you said. No, I will um, agree. It's busy. Day. No, 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 no. It's it's twelve ranges. You start with nine. There's no progression. You just start with nine, right? Mm. And then, like, you slowly add a few more. There are barely many. Uh, there's no real character development much. Like, sure, Stinger gets a bit. The brothers get a bit, and and it's just. Some may get one episode to shine and whatever, but that's it. It's just so, so busy. It's all about lucky, and that's it. See, and I like, can agree I, and disagree with you on so many levels. Like, I mean, I'll say, like, I mean, for starters, I will disagree that yes, even though it's Q Ranger Q for nine, I will disagree that it didn't strictly start off with nine. I mean, obviously, we knew nine was coming, but I felt yeah, the beginning but, was fairly layered. Again, it started with yes. red and blue, and then it took went from there. Um, and you know, I'll say as well that, you know, like when it came to the character development, I'll say that, you know, I felt that Jark Matter were actually a good bunch of villains. I loved how it was Mm -hmm. all about saving the universe rather than saving the world, which again can be sometimes hit or miss in the Sentai universe. And I also kind of like the disorganized way of Jark Matter. And by that, like, Mm, let me explain. Um, basically, you know how in Star Wars, you see different generals represent a different sector of the whole galaxy, right? And I got a lot of vibes of each I'll agree with that. I mean, I mean, you know, like, for me, say, you know, like, I'll say that the plot was actually something on, again, it was like, it was so much more on a grander scale, and just the way that each set of rangers, whether it was gold and silver together, or whether it was green, or whether it was blue, it's like, you know, know, they each had their section, their origin story. I mean, you know, like, Cosplayer was saying, like, how vague he kind of felt it was, but actually, you know, I mean, all right, you know, what, I mean, 
yeah, like I'll talk a little bit more later on. But yeah, sure, it did kind of centre around Lucky a hell of a lot for obvious reasons. But yes. I did feel that, you know, he really cared about Okami Blue. I felt that the story, you know, like again, Stinger had his own spin off uh, V Cinema, if I'm not mistaken, or it might have just been a DVD. Yeah. So really there was cool. so much going on. So again, I will agree with about how busy it is, but. I felt that, you know, and so, I can see why people might say it's a mess, but for me personally, I would say it was an organised mess that I followed. I found it good to follow. No. I mean, the villains were a bit hit and miss, but when it came to the heroes, I absolutely loved it. And again, I'll go on to that in the hero section. But I did actually... Okay, I got to talk about the Stinger thing. We will talk <laughs> about the Stinger thing, absolutely. But let's go on... Let's kind of take a little step back. And let's say, what did we know about Q-Ranger before the first episode aired? Now, for me, as I didn't really like Zyodra all that much, there were so many wild rumours into... And it was hard to know what to believe. But yeah, ultimately, I think everyone believed the solid truth that it was going to be another Space Sentai, like another Mega Ranger. And then I do vaguely remember seeing the first trailer and just how wild the concept of starting with nine was so yeah. let's go over to cosplayer what did you th what what did you know before ep one aired because i think you and i spoke about this loosely as the development and such that uh i think i saw we spoke um how is it possible to start have a starting night I mean, the closest anything like that was, uh, in my mind, of bombastic like that would be Goonja on that level of, um, of. You uh, mean the flair, starting setup? Were... Is that what you're trying to say? Just basically, when you have something like nine, is basically what other or generic rangers would be finished with. <laughs> but the fact that, that you start, like let's say Bokenja, they have six. You have Kyoruja, that has seven. I love it, by the way. You have something like uh, Gowonjo, which has seven. So do you see what I mean? Whereas you start with nine, and I'm like in my head, okay. How? To be fair, like I again, think. that was no, the no, 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 that was the perception, me, of course. Yeah, yeah, but but let me just please. Uh, that's that was my inclination. Just literally, okay, you have my attention. Then the big question is how? How do you execute with a starting nine? That was my first inclination, really. Well, remember the Q-let, the q -let, like the little pachinko thing that they would roll with the q -tunnel? Yeah, of course. That was like... such a fun... I love, that, I love that in the show, but oh, we'll talk no. about the opening episodes in a sec. No. What did you know mm -hmm. in the build-up, Zeron? Um, I just knew it was going to be a spacing Sentai, and that it was potentially going to be like a Star Trek like show or sci-fi, but it it was it didn't really turn into a sci-fi show. It was more like a space fantasy show. You know what I mean? All of so, that. Thing, can I can I can I add to zero on that? Uh, it added a it had a uh, I've got to get this right now. Sort of the very loose. Uh, 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 concepts from Forze incorporating the uh, Zodiac symbols into some of the ranges. Like I do remember seeing Forze comparisons. Yes. With the uh, Libra you've got. You've got um, uh, uh, the Snake. You've got... Oh, I, of course, there's you, the you whole list. The there's a massive list, of yes. course. Yes. yes. So yes. I do, I do remember like them implying that Zodiac was going to be, you know, like implied in it, and it kind of wasn't. It kind of wasn't. I'm just trying to find where Chameleon fits in that. But like, okay, but yeah, of course, like when it came to that lead up, like with that execution of nine, yeah, I think I probably agree with cosplayer in that. Yo, like, how the hell are they going to do nine? But let's go into talking about those first few episodes. And again, as I said at the very beginning. I felt that, you know, the way that they layered it, so it led up to nine, you know, maybe in those opening few episodes, it wasn't like you were hit with boom nine, and that's just my opinion. Admittedly, it was a bit haphazard, but once that main nine were established, I actually liked the format, I've got to be honest. The way the teams were also dispatched, like, so you weren't always having all nine fighting, it'd be like a set of five or a set of four, or <laughs> five go there, four go there kind of thing. So I actually really liked it, and even if it was a bit form formu formulaic, and predictable i still liked it for me i actually loved lucky she she read and then i went on to love show lompo ryukuba that's all i got to say uh we'll go with Ryu zero Commander, what... you mean huh 
Well, Ryu obviously, Kumon. well, Sholon Poe was his name, and then he yes. became Ryu Commander. Yeah, that's, so you're right. You said Ryu Kiva. Oh, Ryu Kiva. I'm Ryu Kiva. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> right. Zeron, what did you think of the first few episodes? On the first few episodes, I remember seeing all these characters come together and stuff, or they're just like, and but basically, they were like hyping up Lucky as his like savior of the universe, you know. Even at the beginning, they were like, Oh, you are a new re- red hero, you know, we needed a red hero. <laughs> and like, and like, they basically just made him like the joke. And like, we get to see these characters work together, and then it's like not until like episode 12. We get to see Show Rampo and then the blue kid come up here. The Which, by the kid. way, um, sorry, I don't remember I, his I, name either. Yeah, like the guy, like the kid, like this was the first time we had had a kid in over like twenty oh, wow. years. Yeah, twenty years. Oh, and, okay. Like, basic, yeah, sure. Yeah, because nineteen ninety four, um, with Joe Ranger, and like he was the basically the first kid we've seen. So I was pretty happy to see a kid in like the suit, you know, because I'm always down for another Blake. I was situation. indifferent to that, to be fair. But Exp- wait, what do you mean by kid? If you don't mind me asking, um, uh, he's talking about Sky Blue. He was like Fuck. the kid who was oh, like right. who got his yeah. powers from the bear. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and like he had like a giant form as well, where he's like a man, and he look his costume looked like the thing. And then, like, he had a brother. Like, he had, like, there were two brothers sibling over here. There is on That's the it. I mean, we will definitely get into that when we talk about the actual characters. Cosplayer, what did you think of the first few episodes? Honestly, I'll be on, I'll keep it simple. I barely remember. I mean, the only thing I remember is when Lucky just crashes down on the surfboard, almost like Mega Rangering it. Going <laughs> up, kind of thing. And then, um, just like. The way I picture it, it's almost like he has the power loose, uh, unofficial power of Domino from X Men kind of thing. Like he has the power of luck on his side kind of thing. Well, mm-hmm. I think there was a bit of a stretch of the imagination when it came to how lucky he was, but obviously that was kind of thing. Like, ironically, where I've made all these notes on what I thought of, again, one of my favorite top five Sentai, ironically even though I remember the humour, like, when it comes to what hit me, what I remember, what I took away from it, I'll be honest, I didn't really take so much of the humour, apart from the fact that everyone was sick of him saying Yosha Lucky. But, so, yeah, but when but I think, but now that you guys kind of reminded me, yeah. and I think back, like, I do remember that opening episode where he crashes. And again, they kind of, like, they kind of do that as an ongoing gag as well throughout the series. So, like, Mm. when you guys kind of bring it up, like, I do kind of feel a bit nostalgic about how humorous the show was. Bearing in mind, I was so caught up in, like, Oshi Black and Dr. Anton. And I was also, like, so caught up again in uh, Stinger's uh, Sassari Oranges storyline. I was so caught up in the dark stuff that it's almost hard. Yeah, like, it's so nostalgic to hear about uh, the funny stuff. But let's... All right, so I know Zeron's aching for this. Let's talk about the cast. Let's talk about our heroes in a little bit depth. So I'm a mm-hmm. so I'm a try I'm a reel this one off first this time. So there's just so much to cover. So I will try and start with the main nine. So like Shishi Red, as irritating as many found him, I loved him. He somewhat managed to hog the limelight and give room for other characters to shine. That was just mm-hmm. my opinion. Uh, Okami Blue, I loved his fluffy armor, his classic look. And that insecure person. But we didn't personality... really get that much story with him, though. Sadly. See, I think with him it was more about his personality, and again, you do get that story with him. Uh, but again, it's just so. Again, it's just so more about his personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, but yeah, but again, I felt so empathetic towards um, Okami Blue with Sussuri Orange. Again, I associated him with more more as me being a younger sibling. And, you know, the fact that he's a darker, moody character. And I love his spin And his brother played by Kamen Rider. I was getting to that. But, yeah, you all right, you got it. But, like, yeah, obviously the ongoing saga with his brother, Kamen Rider, Shin gets. With Oshi Black, I think aside from being an android, I loved, again, how he, he was able to give be given a completely different look based on the fact that he was a built, like, fighting wrestler, meathead type character. Mm-hmm. With the duo Gold and Silver, Balance, I love this crafty personality. It kind of gives and me Naga. that Arthur Dodger vibe. And... I also like Naga's, like, his, um... Like, I always... I think this was the first time we actually had, like, a somewhat gay character, you know? Because I'm pretty Wait, sure one? those two were... Gold and Silver. I'm pretty sure those, those guys were actually gay. So. Do you think so, cosplayer? 
Uh, what if uh, Naga was <laughs> Naga and Balance were a couple? You know, I don't, I don't I, know because they were very. I'd probably say the opposite. They were like brothers who weren't brothers. What do you think, cosplayer? Just on that alone, I foresee them more as brothers, almost like um, the similar relation to a uh, 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 beat buster and stag buster kind of relation. Mm-hmm. I can see that. So yeah, like, definitely. So like, I'll just quick again. I'm just so trying to roll through the night yeah, yeah. with Naga. Go on, go on. With Naga again, like he had his whole he bits of kind metal saga going on. Like this is something that I you know like that story was something that absolutely gripped me, and I will talk about that later. Yeah, uh, like d- that. And it let his character build because we hadn't had really that much development until that saga occurred. It's so. out. And I actually did enjoy it. I mean, like just seeing him become. I mean, like with connected. Naga. I mean, even though you had like you know Sassari Orange being a younger brother, you had Sky Blue being an older brother. With Naga, you know, he because of his amnesia, he was very much kind of like the lost sheep, following like a younger brother. So I kind mm. of associated with that as well. Um, and you know, but again with. The Hibitsukai Metal, it was just so groundbreaking in my opinion. Now I've got to really go on to Comedian Green. Now she was Bay for days. I mean, she yeah. totally made me melt. Uh, but, you know, but sort of simping to one side, she was very slick, you know, like in terms of fighting style, in terms of her powers as well. So, you know, she was really kind of doing it for womankind, if you will. But with Washi Pink, though, like I didn't really connect with too much. Like, I, you know, like the tension with her in yellow. Kind of felt a bit weird, but you know, but the whole tech and geek thing, you know, kind of and being insecure, I kind of rolled with that a little bit. But Sparda, he was a decent character, very understated, but I loved his cooking antics and I felt that perfectionist vibe did connect with me. He was one of those um, characters we didn't really get that much story out of. All right, so I will throw it over to Cosplayer. What did you think of the Nine? I honestly felt that this was a show that had great cast, but wasted. Wasted great cast. And the reason, from my perspective, that is. Like, let me just quickly run from my perspective who really caught my eye. Like, you had the Wash Pink voiced by Gokai Yellow. You had three, three One Piece voice actors in here from the main lot. You had... Uh, Oshi Black as Blackbeard. You had um, Okami Blue as uh, Loronoa Zoro. You also had um, uh, Shorompa or Ryu Commander um, uh, 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 as a Trafalgar Law. So, you know, already those were a hook for me. And I just felt they were like, okay, I hear Zoro. I do not see uh, Okami Blue. I don't think but, they're supposed to be like One Piece characters in Sentai, to be fair. No, 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 no. What I mean is, is if you were to try and bring uh, that level of an actor to a character, you try to either bring a unique style of voice or a, a, a different style of voice or a different tone or bring something unique. I heard nothing different. Mm. All I heard was the same... Uh, counterparts of One Piece. Oh, so show. you did think they were putting One Piece characters in Sentai then? Because bear no, in no, mind, no, no, I no. don't know who this. I don't know who the One Piece characters are. Yeah, no. What I meant is, is I don't feel they are putting in One Piece characters in Sentai. I felt I heard just okay. them. So you, what you're trying there, to say is, is that they no... didn't stretch their vocal range. Then is that what you're no. trying to say? Basically. Well, to be fair, like, I know about One Piece, but I've not seen it, and that's my bad. Me neither. But, okay, and I, uh, just... zi- I mean, because then... I mean, this is it. You've already... Right, I mean, because you mentioned Shorompo, which is my guy, but I'll yeah, let yeah, Zeron yeah. quickly sum up the nine, and then we'll talk about the additional three in a sec. Um, like, basically, Lucky is pretty fun. I actually... Uh, despite being an annoying-ass mofo, I actually enjoyed him. Um, great, Orange yeah. was great. Orange was great. I loved his story with his brother and stuff, and just the character development we got for him was spot on. And I do wish we get more of those special one-off episodes or specials. You know what I mean? Well, we do. Then, well, I'm not. T- well, I'm done about Sentai, Sentai, but yeah, Rider. Than, I know it's Rider, Rider, but 
I want more Sentai stuff. Cause there's more characters that need to be explored. Um, Chameleon Green, she was hot as hell. I was totally <laughs> smashed. She was hot, like, and her character as well being, like, kind of an outcast, you know, and last of her people was a very interesting take on that. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and as well as her being a ninja, you know, disappearing ninja, that was pretty interesting, although we didn't really hear that ninja part that often. But, um, then we got to see, um, um, Oshi Black, whose character was a da- like a dad, like his creator basically being that evil. was such I got a, a messed of- up origin story, straight up. Yeah, like I got a lot of Frankenstein vibes of that, and yes. I actually enjoyed that quite a bit because I've read Frankenstein before, and it's a great story. Okay, and cool. then, um, yeah, and like I, I think that was a pretty good way to explore that type of thing. And then we got Okami Blue again, I don't. He didn't really have that much like character development. Same with Orange. He was just kind of boring. Or not Orange, but Yellow. He was kind of boring. So, you know, like, how much, how many else do I have left? I don't know. But I, I mean, I think you covered the nine, but if you didn't, my bad. But I'm just itching to talk about Ryu Commander. Obviously, you know, this guy, just I just loved him. Uh, you know, like, just the way he was a leader, just the way he was a goofball, the fact that he had that kind of lottery machine for, to choose mm-hmm. who's going out. But then his origin story was so deep with uh, Kuma leader or Kuma commander or whatever he was called. I can't quite remember the name. Obviously, Kuma's mm-hmm. bear. But then, you know, like, going on to the next character, which was Sky Blue. I'm not sure if it was Kuma Sky Blue or something, but anyway... But obviously, like, I, you know, like, I'm not too... Yeah, you know, like, I didn't feel too hot on this kid, like... And obviously, they took him out of it a lot, like, he was at school or something. Uh, but, you know, like, it was kind of funky to see the older sibling... You know, child, older sibling perspective on life. And that was kind of interesting to an ex- extent. But, of course, I will... Uh-huh. Say that again? They didn't really explore Koguma Blue's like, I mean, it's neither story, here nor there because he's a it's kid. Because he's a kid, yeah. And but I do. I okay. So hear me out. I go. do think they should maybe come back when this actor they am an adult. You know, I would like that to would see be if interesting. They can... But then again, you you could say the same with a lot of the kid ca- actors over the course of Sentai. But just to really knock this one out of the park. Who our soldier or who ho o like Ho-O they, people keep mixed up the pronunciation, but ho o soldier nuts. I mean his origin story nuts. I mean, you know, the fact that he's ancient from an ancient time by modern yeah. technology, you know, it just kinda puts a spin God, on that basically. conspiracy theory. Um you got that as well. So he's also the president of the um the galaxy and shit like he's yes, like the main well. leader. That's I mean that's obviously the aftermath, but still uh-huh. it's insane. So go on, cosplayer. What did you think of the additional three? So ho uh, ho sorry ho soldier soldier uh, sky soldier sky blue and uh, Ryu commander. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, Ryu commander. Uh, another violet. I didn't mind. I liked it. I like how he looks. But His we'll get look, to suits he, later. He, we'll get to suits later. I thought uh, ho commander felt like a right rip off uh, time fire. And uh, I can see that. Uh, I can and, see uh, that. Uh, and Sky Blue, it's it's only what the second Cyan Ranger, uh, if I recall. Who would be the first? I'm Kyrudra, um, I'd imagine. Correct, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, like like uh, 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 Dragon Zero said, that it's only what the second kid actor since uh, Kiba third. Ranger from uh, third, third because the Ranger. And what I mean, yeah, you had so... O Ranger, Die Ranger, and. Uh... Sure. Uh, that's all I, that's as far as I got with that one. <laughs> all right, Zeron, what did you think of the additional three? I love her old soldier, him being an ancient being, basically, and basically a god. And then, um, like, Okami Blue, you know, I, I won't hold it up that he's a kid. I just hold that they'll eventually come back with something to give him a little bit more backstory, you know. Like, because he was an orphan, I want to see why he was orphan and how he took care of his brother, you know, that would be an interesting story. And then we got a real commander who's pretty fucking funny. I got a lot of Dr. Y'all Shade vibes love him. from him. I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. Like, Dr. Y'all Shade was one of my favorite characters of all time in Sentai. Like, Dr. Y'all Shade, you're your dad. Fucking love that character. Is that Ryuki? Oh, yes, it is. Sorry, I just had to throw that in there. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so <laughs> let's talk about the villains. Uh, right, so I'm going to be very brief on this one. So I didn't really connect to the villains too much. I mean, I like the vibe. I like the uh, concept. I liked what was going on. I loved, again, what you said about disorganization earlier, Zeron. Like, yeah, it was all like that. But for me, like, the takeaway from the villains would be Scorpio. His rise and fall, the fact that he was duped into being someone climbing the ladder at Jark Matter, it just kind of feels like any company on the planet, to be mm-hmm. fair. I mean, yeah, it was a really tragic story. But even going over the bios, like, you know, they, you know, each uh, general, each, like, planet leader had, like, a unique story to tell. But because, uh-huh. but, you know, like, kind of hitting on what cosplayer thinks, like, where it was so busy with the heroes alone, like, with the villains, for me, there's only so much my brain can take and remember, and that's when I'm not forgetting stuff. I mean, Don Arumage was pretty basic and cliche as the leader, though. But for me, personally, I kind of allowed that, like, I kind of let that go. Plus, bearing in mind, like... You know, where we this didn't was get like... to see him until the very end, you well, know. This is he it. Was I, mean, like, I mean, the figure. ironic thing was was like this was where I kind of got into like hardcore fan subbing and where I started doing like the technical stuff. So I literally have studied Arumage line for line and it was insane. Cosplayer, you mm. want to say something? Yeah, my two cents would be and forgive me, I barely Oh, actually, I don't even remember any of the villain, which kind of goes to show how much I try to remember this particular series. So I'm going to be polite and pass it over to Dragon Oh, Zero. right, fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, Zero on, go on. Um, So the, mo- like, Don Armag, like, I got a lot of Emperor Palpatine vibes of Empire Strikes I'll Back agree with that. Like- I'll go with that. I mean, you seem to be hitting... The- I mean, to be fair, it's a space sentai. When are they not going to do you know like there's only so much they could like do original but all right i could i could feel that and here's why because in empire strikes back we don't get to see palpatine except maybe a little bit of his face you know and that was mostly what dino Mars did and it wasn't until like <laughs> until the next like the very end of the series do we actually see um like dino Mars show his true form and like not even technically, like he, like we see his form before you, him, but it's like a copycat. You know, it's only until after do we actually see like the final form when during the final battle, and he's like, "You may be alive to destroy you." <laughs> but he gets his ass whooped. By but them. again, like yeah, you know, for me, Arumage, yeah, you know, like he had, he looked cool, was just a bit cliche and unoriginal, but I allowed it. With Scorpio, mm-hmm. I really should have said a lot more, but. Yeah, there's only so much I could fit in my head. And, you know, like, there was obviously the spin-off and there was the fact that, you know, all the honour that kind of came bound with Scorpio and just the amount that was on Sassari Orange's shoulders, that was just so much, such a deep story that my words can't do justice for it personally. But, you know, talking about that storyline, let's go on to talk about plot progression for Q-Ranger overall. I mean, there was so much going on. For me personally, each character had such a strong story. And it was weird how they managed to tie in each ranger's origin story to how Jark Mata had a negative impact on their lives. Uh, there was <laughs> so many minor power-ups, though, that I could barely care about. Um, but the power <laughs> of Orion was definitely oh. key to plot progression, in my opinion. And, oh, you know, like, I could see it was over the top. Like, I could see why people didn't like it. But for me, I actually did enjoy it. Uh, I'll let Zeron like go next on this one. For what? Um, plot progression. What did you think? Like, what did you think of Ryan? Okay, what did you think um, of it was somewhat of a good like plot progression, you know. But I will admit that it did get some flow sometimes, but it did cover it with character backstories and stuff, you know. And I do think that would be interesting. Like, it did a pretty good good job of making sure people still kept on tuning in, you know. And like, I agree, was but a... I don't think plot cosplayer will. Yeah, go on. But like, Q Ranger was like actually the last series I actually watched live, you know, before I uh, took my break until Re Soldier or Q uh... Ranger or whatever. But yeah, and like I've been, that's what I've been watching. And like, that's the thing about Q Ranger, it kept you interested. You know what I mean? So. But then, yeah, it was a... did you? But then, if you took a break after that, did you not feel that subsequent s- series kept you reeled in? Lupin versus Pat made me very bored. We will talk, we'll talk about, about Lupin next exactly. time. Cosplayer, yes. what did you think? 
because you're holding your head in your hands. You don't seem too optimistic. No. Simply no. Like, uh, and what I mean by that is, is uh, well, you know, you mentioned about the Orion form, and we'll get to that when we get to suits. It's like, going to be next. One... So yeah, all right. Good, because right. I'm gonna, I'm, I have my two cents on that. But that aside, each one with their own story. I honestly, I didn't remember until you refreshed my mind about Oshi Black's Frankenstein story. I will admit that was grim. Uh, Sassari, again, grim. But then all the others. I'm more happy to remember. I, uh, who gives a tosh? I'm sorry. But again, <laughs> I, I, I barely remember all the others. I don't, I didn't even know that they have any other personal story of sorts, except for the ones that you mentioned. That You know, I mean, Kajiki Yellow, he was just there as a chef, you know. It's like, and again, just as an example, like... Uh, to be fair, what uh, I mean, that's a bit no, unfair, no, no, no. because with Yellow, his whole story was about him being a chef, really. No, 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 let, let, me, just, let <laughs> me just premise that, let's say, Gokai Green, was the chef, but also like the science nerd. You've got. But you we'll, didn't, we'll, but you again, didn't we'll, really have we'll, that one, much sec, one sec, green. one sec, one sec. <laughs> one sec. But we'll get to um, uh, Lupin versus Pat in, uh, uh, next time. But like, for instance, you've got uh, uh, Lupin Blue, who was also the chef, and yet Kajiki Yellow is just there. No, and... I can sort of agree, but. I think, but again, like, where I was so, like I said earlier, where I was so caught up in the deep stuff, I kind of, yeah, like, again, you guys reminded me of the comedy stuff, which I would say, I can't even remember his name, Kajiki Yellow or whatever. Yellow Espada. Bearing in mind, we now have Espada in Kamen Rider, but anyway. Um, But, like, with Espada, with Espada, like, again, like, it was all about that tension with Washi Pink. Like, what are you doing? Um, shit, no, that's shit. it. That's I've, why it was mad. That's who we forgot. We forgot to talk about washing pink and the characters. I did. Well, that's, no, you no, forgot. No, that's, that was one of the no, ones but, you forgot. You can get. I we don't can, even we, remember. We, her. We, you can talk about pink in a bit. Um, but no, I I covered my nine anyway. But like, I want to talk about uh, the devices and the sort of power oh, ups okay. and stuff. So yeah. I already mentioned, you know, like I was kind of going from Orion in the plot progression to Orion in how it functioned as a device. Obviously, I'll be honest, I thought that white suit was sharp as hell. But, you know, when it came to like, the, you know, like, you know, how big, a, how big a thing do they want to attach to their wrists, though? That Q-Tama changer thing? I mean, that's the one thing. I'm just like, WTF? But I will be honest, I did like the Q-Tama motif and like how those Q changes and like how they were an integral part of the mecha, which, you know, how they were also like, it kind of made the mecha look a bit knobbly, knobbly and basic. But I felt that also influenced the Power Rangers 2017 movie in a way. Mm. Uh, the my, Again, I already mentioned the minor power-ups like Pegasus and Tayo Sun and whatever. They were kind of fun and gimmicky, but like, what's the point? But with Hibitsukai Metal, that actually had some purpose to it. had a bit of flair to it. But then with, again, with Orion, but just to be a little bit more specific on Orion, it was so OTT. It was so grandeur. It was like the cape and everything. I mean, I could see how it could be a bad thing, but for, it's, for me, it was very on brand. There was something about, <laughs> who, but like, just to quickly cover who our soldier, like I did like his little microphone at the side of his mouth. Like, and then, like, yo, his weapons were pretty cool. And, like, because the weapons are a bit mishmash in this show, really. But <laughs> but for me, you know, like, it might not have made sense, but it was also easily explained, which does contradict itself, but it's neither here nor there. Cosplayer speak. <laughs> um, right. Are we covering suits yet, or are we just going to... Uh, the devices, it? like the Give Q-Tamas right. and whatnot, and okay, the Mecha. So, so yeah, okay, and we so cover, me, I've let's... just covered Mecha already. Let, let me start with the Caesar Blaster, which was a, a bracelet thing, which was a gun on a bracelet, which was neither here or there. But you then plug your q as almost like as if it's a joystick. on. Kind of <laughs> yeah, so, I remember that. Yeah. So it's like a... Uh, but from a toy side of thing, um, 
uh, uh, from a, a, a gimmick or um, what's the terminology, promotional standpoint, the fact that you can use your henshin item to then use it, utilize it in your mechs, toy mechs. I thought that was rather clever. Okay. Uh, I agree with that. Like, I do think that... Again, what, I already like, mentioned, you know, I felt it influenced Power Rangers 2017. Well, think about it. Well, think about the their Megazord. This was made by, this was made by Bandai before it was it made with, you think Bandai of America? Yeah, it was all, like, cleverly done, really, when you think about they it. They were really going to do it. Now but you were means... saying, you were saying cosplayer. It felt like Skittles, like, on steroids. Okay. Is that your ending note on that topic? Until I get to the suits and mechs, then I have another plethora. Oh, so, I mean, like, I mean, I'd already covered mechs. Like, again, like, I thought it was a bit mishmash and knobbly, I already said. I mean, yeah, you had the Q Voyager, which was, like, their big ship thing. I mean, Mm. it was a bit standard, but, you know, like, it was all right. Like, I liked it. And then it kind of split in half or something at some point, and it got lost or something at some point. Right. My two cents on the mechs, and I'll keep it quick and brief, is I liked how... And, and someone calls it Scramble City, where you can have the legs as feet, feet a leg, and you can move Yeah, around yeah, around I remember that. that. Which, that was unique, and I'll give it that, and I can't remember the last time we had a Scramble... No, uh, Boca and Joe, if I remember correctly, you can play Scramble City with. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong there. The, the mechs itself felt very um, one-dimensional. Oh, I mean... That's sad. That's really sad. I mean, like, you know, just to kind of off note, I do actually have Ryu Teo, and I will be reviewing it on my channel in about, I think, next week. I just thought I'd put that plug in there. <laughs> <laughs> but any, mm-hmm. anything else before I throw it to Zeron? Um, well, oh, he's taking it anyway. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Um, my basically, like, I felt the mecha <sighs> were pretty good. Like, it wasn't a clusterfuck, you know. Like I'll agree. Yeah, it goodness. was clean. It was clean. Like and it always remained clean, you know. And that's what I liked about it, you know. And it uh, like some mechazords got to switch out, you know, with Lucky or you make, you know. But I don't think there was a big like a mecha like ultimate mecha, you know. Can I, can so. I just uh, can I just jump in for two seconds here? Go on. Mm-hmm. Like take Shinkano. Take. Uh, a Die Boken, for instance, just two random ones off the cuff, right? Okay. Is it didn't really have that kind of personality in the design. Whereas, say, Die Boken, you take uh, um, a Shinkeno, you take a Dai Jujin, you take yeah, any of the other Yeah, it's like you're, you're talking it, like each mecha had like a unique property. Is that what you're trying to say? Not just that. Not just that. And a unique when, look? When you, yes. And also, when you slap it together to get that grandiosa megazord you right i that's what i'm gonna watch for kind of thing you want to look for even magic king was unique as well oh no magic ranger had like a hell of a lot going on with its mecha but but still i'm just i'm just but it had the personality okay and thus what i felt i felt my my personal two senses when it came to q rangers megs it felt very one-dimensional because all of them in some way somehow had a cutama somewhere on it and you know what to expect kind of thing like and even when you play scramble city or whatever even if they had different heads like one was a bull one was a wolf one's a chameleon (laughs) it was still the same one note kind of one trick pony kind of thing the only thing you had going was that you play scramble city that's it okay I mean, like, I'll just say it again. Ryuteo, Ryuteo, Ryuteo. Um, but, all right, I'm going to throw it to... Right, so we can also... I'll throw it to Zeron, and he can also take it on to the next topic. So, like, <laughs> you know, like, talk about what you thought of the mecha, like, the devices, and then... I mean, obviously, because this is it. Like, Washi Pink was quite integral to the development of all of that show-wise, right? So, you know, talk about Washi Pink, and then also to, then go on to what you thought of, like, the... Yo, the henshin suits and their civilian uh-huh. attire. Um, so basically, um, the auxiliary and the mecha. I thought the Q changer was a. It reminded me of um, Shin, um, not Shinkin Gold, but um, Choi Gold changer. You know, with the um, hand brace and stuff like holding it on. You know. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of vibe from that. 
and like basically the um, suits, like the cucumber devices. So it's pretty interesting. I played with the toys before at a convention, you know, and it's, it's a pretty unique device. <laughs> and um, but like basically, um, I did feel like um, wash like other than Washi Pink basically being the developer, we didn't. I don't really know. Uh, she did call the ship her dad or something or some shit like that. I don't know. Mate, I don't know if that's I, a Mandela effect or not. Or but anyway. I don't remember. I, <laughs> right. Um, but, sure. Like, carry she, on. I think she was like an ancient being from back back before the dark matter took over. I think she had a connection. Oh, to why? Orion. Why is what well, she picks origin story wiped from my brain? Because I do remember something, but I don't know what I remember. Yeah, that's... like basically they. <laughs> Destroy the mecha to get a new mecha, which is basically her giant um, ultimate form or something, or Shishi or Iron or something. All right, you know? so, like, what did you think of Washi Pink's, like, hen- yeah, because bearing in mind her armor had, like, the wings on it, and then what did you think of her, like, robot it sh- look? It should have been used better, and I don't remember what she looks like, to be honest you don't with you. Rem- like- yeah, all right, but all right, out of the 11, 12. What, yeah, the other 11 rather. What did you think of their looks both in and out of uh, Ranger armor? I enjoyed the um, uniforms that they had. I liked their jackets a lot, and I wish I had one of myself, you know. Wait, which like jacket? Those, the one they use outside the of the form. Well, because I think red, I think red and green kind of had like a similar looking coat, like jacket. And then yeah. blues, no, yellow one... did. Yeah, yellow all right, did yellow did. And uh, Silver did as well. Okay, alright, I'll get... Alright, so, yeah, carry on, Zeron. Yeah, I actually would love to have a, one yeah. of those, our jackets. They're actually really good design, and I do wish we get to see more, like, uniforms like that in the future. Sometime. I think you do get some third-party sellers, like, making those jackets, by the way. You should probably look for mm-hmm. those. Uh, well, cos- sure, but it can't make my side, so that's the thing. I don't know, just look for it, you never know. Z- uh, cosplayer, what did you think of, like, the suits and, you know, civilian right. look? Right, Let me start with the civvy looks. Uh, it instantly gave me um, Decker Ranger or SPD um, uniform looks, honestly, with the whole star just slapped on their jacket kind of thing, just instantly gave me uh, SPD or... Decker Ranger vibe. I like, I really liked how each Ranger, by suit anyways, um, by presentation, they all had their own different characteristics. Like, Shishi <laughs> Red was like a very, um, I don't want to use the term bulk standard Ranger, but, you know. Vibrant? Very, 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 yes, that's a good word to use. But it also had that trademark style um, Ranger look. Um uh, prominent, if you will, but then on the contrast, you had something like, uh, say, uh, Okami Blue, which had the fur uh, collar. You have uh, Oshi Black, uh, which had more of a stocky um, uh, bull, almost like as though if it was an American football player kind of thing, with so much padding and so much armor going on. You have, um, oh, who's another example? Say, um, uh, ba, 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 I was escaping. Uh, uh, Ho-Ho Soldier, Phoenix Soldier. That was, again, as I mentioned earlier to this uh, um, show, that it's almost like somewhere between uh, um, Time Fire kind of thing. Or, um, sort of like a... Like Shishi Red, except upgraded or, 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 or like a mirror image in, in, in that kind of retrospect. Um, washi pink, uh, just to throw that, how she has her own wings, like Sassy Orange has a tail, but CG'd in, but that doesn't matter, neither here or there. Um, I will talk about have... CG towards the end, but yeah, yeah carry on. But, but, but they all have, in their own way, little bits of characteristics. I mean, minus uh, uh, Kajiki Yellow's uh, annoying um, sword oh, that. Well, I'm going to hit this, I'm going to hit this one out of the park. So... I should have covered Sholompo very much more in detail earlier. But for me, like, yo, he had that Geki Ranger fluffy look. And that was absolutely what? amazing. Yeah, I'm talking no, I'm talking pre armor. I'm talking pre armor here. And like, yo, the big coat and just the dragon head. It was just so over the top and so amazing. I loved it. 
it's one of the many reasons why I love him. When it comes to his Ryu Commander uh, purple attire, even better. Like, yo, know, he's got that big cape going on. He's got the collar going on. He's got the big staff going on. He is, you know, a mentor ranger. And that is what I absolutely loved about his look as a ranger. Uh, now, going, so like, again, going through the other 11. So when it comes to uh, Shishi, so all right, yeah, just to quickly reply to Cosplayer. Like, yo, he sa- you're saying that you thought Decker Ranger with the coats and that, and I think Zeron mentioned the coats as well. But, like, for me, that is not what comes to mind at all. I mean, yeah, like, I remember them having those coats, and, again, I've seen those third-party sellers. They do look cool. But they go way beyond it. And, again, yo, Decker Ranger was a clean uniform look. These guys were very tatty in comparison. So, like, you had... So, again, like, going on to She, She, Red. He had the coat, he had the jacket, but he had jeans going on. Like, but then you go to Green. You know, she had that big puffy skirt. Uh, But, again, you know, both of their Ranger looks were pretty standard. Uh, You know, but for them, it was more about the suit actors and how they kind of posed and stuff. So, like, Chameleon Green had that sort of, like, ducking ninja uh, pose that she did. Uh, when it well, came... yellow had an elegant like pose, you know. See, like, like yeah, admittedly, Sparta, you know, like obviously with that helmet, I really, you know, that helmet really bugged me. It was very ninja hey, captor. It was very ninja of, captor, in my opinion. That's all I got to say about. Wait, you seen ninja captor? I've seen the pictures and I've got the rules. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, but when it came to Washi Pink, like yo, know, she was a very tatty robot. She could have been a rag doll, really. And then her ranger look, she had the wings. It kind of made sense and it kind of didn't. Uh, when it came to, like, I already mentioned earlier, Okami Blue. Yeah, like, his ranger look, you could see the fluffiness out on his suit. That, that, that I don't know whether, I, you know, like, one time, sometimes I'd be, like, loving it. Sometimes it'd be irritating me. It was a very ambivalent feeling. Go on. Quick thing. Two things about Sho Rompo. Number one. Did his civvy form remind you of Doggy Kruger? Number two, um, the his uh, staff. Um, I just remembered that's the second time we've ever seen something of a snooker or pool cue since um, Gal Silver. I loved how he used it in the Q Voyager, though. So, yeah, when you mentioned that. But in terms of Doggy Kruger, I've got to be honest, no. Like, I'd probably put it more akin. I'd probably put his look more akin to Geki Ranger. And again, that's kind of like my perspective on that. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to think. So, like, the other Ranger, so, like, with Orange, like, again, he had that very tatty Star Wars look, admittedly. And again, his tail. Ranger look had the Stinger Tail, which, again, CGI, I'll talk about later. Uh, when it came to gold and silver, I mean, silver looked quite cool. Gold was just C-3PO, right? Uh, but again, and their Ranger look, I mean, you know, Hibitsukai Metal, I've mentioned a million times already. Amazing. You know, like, just those kind of little purpley bits they added on just kind of added the flair to it, in my opinion. Um, I th- <laughs> this is where I start missing Rangers now. Um, I mean, Sky Blue, like, you know, I mean, kids, the kid, oh, but... Oh. In but the, the ranger form, mittens. but the ranger form, you know, he had the scarf going on. I'm like, yeah, okay. And who our soldier? Again, like the aftermath, he's like all presidential and stuff. It's insane. I like his astronaut form though, and his ranger. But form. like, I'll be honest. I think if I remember correctly, his in series look was just a big leather coat. But then his soldier form, like his ranger form. Again, it's very much. It did have a little bit of a military feel to it. If I'm kind of really I got examining a lot of it astronaut like that. Vibes. Like the Go on, cosplayer. One thing I will say about uh, Horo Soldier, if you don't mind me intervening, is, and I forgot to mention this during devices, is where he was. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, but is he or is he not the second ranger to use a sword and shield? as a weapon because the first one in my head would be um uh oh uh, <laughs> Wolf, Wolf's of fire. Wolf's of fire to be fair they both when you bring up walls of fire i can kind of see some similarity between the two i mean in terms of sword and shield i wouldn't yeah you know, like even though i've seen a billion sentai now um i can't really think but it's still cool it's still a very cool aesthetic that who our soldier has with that straight up. So I can, you know, that's no. my take on something that I've literally just yeah. remembered as you bring it up. 
But I'm just trying to remember, really. I mean, who, who? I mean, can you, off the cuff, either of you, remember any other Sentai series, off the cuff, with a sword and shield? As Maybe their Lupin weapon? Ranger. Then... Well, but that was afterwards. Then... Maybe no, no, Lupin no, Ranger. Not... That was afterwards, but still. Um... No. That, I, don't I don't think Wardard. I think the Wardard was... was the only one. Yeah. No, but that's well, fair enough. But. And yeah, what what so what? No, we your... soldier was supposed to be night theme, and they didn't have a sword and shield. Don't know who. Oh, um, soldier. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but it's neither here nor there, really. So let's move on to the next topic: the movies and the team ups. How many team ups did they actually have? <laughs> um, because I know right. So the one before was I don't think they. That's it. They didn't do one with Zuoja. But they did, they did one, one with Lupat, Lupat, and then Zero the World appeared in it, uh, yeah, which was world. actually quite amusing. So, like, I do kind of remember it, and it was kind of a bit obscure because of what was supposed to have been going on with team-ups. I mean, I, mm-hmm. di- I, I did kind of feel a little bit gutted that we didn't get a team-up with Zuoja. And, you know, there was, there was, like, a couple of reasons banded about why that like didn't tasks. happen. Yeah, about Tusk. That's the main one I heard. Uh, I mean, in terms of the main movie, I've really got to be honest. I, I know I've seen it. I just can't remember anything about it. Can any of you two fill that in? Haven't seen um, it. What do you mean by... So, forgive me for intervening, but what did you mean by when you said about the potential team up? Would you... Uh, Zero Joe, no, they didn't. Did they didn't do one. Because? Oh, because Tusk, uh, Tusk got arrested or something. Over, the actor who yeah, played he Tusk got over arrested. somebody... He ran over somebody and I think killed them. Yeah, but that's... Again, that's what I heard. But then, ironically, I'll say I heard a few different things before it. Like, oh, Q Ranger sales were low or something. and Or Zero Zooja wasn't that popular. So I heard, like, other stuff as well. But that was, ironically, the one that I heard most recent was about Tusk. Uh, but what, can you the guys one remember... that played Zero Elephant? thing is, I do remember a little... Now that... Just kind of off the top of my head, I am remembering the main Q-Ranger movie was something about a galactic train or something. Uh, no, nothing from no, either of you So, uh, moving on to like other little bits of Q-Ranger, let's talk about the fighting choreography. Now, th- for me, it was very unique to each ranger. So it's not like the series was generally really good or generally really bad. It was kind of a case of like Washi Pink couldn't really fight and was really girly. Whereas Chameleon Green was all about being ninja and she had like the chameleon invisible form. And, you know, the fact is they kind of overdid their superpowers. You know, kind of sort of what they introduced in late Disney Power Rangers. So you could really see the Power Ranger influence in some of this stuff. But, you know, like, for me, like, Shishi Red didn't really have too much fighting power, whereas, like, Oshi Black clearly did. Uh, Comedian Green clearly did. And then you had Okami Blue, who was obviously influenced more like a sort of Gower Ranger Wolf kind of thing. So that's kind of me. Yeah, again, I'm not going into every single Ranger, but that's kind of me kind of being really brief. What did you two think? Start with Zeron. Um, basically, um, I thought the choreography was pretty decent for the series. I did like their pose and stuff and how they, influ- like, had their natural power be influenced with their fort fight choreography. I think that was actually a really good thing for the series to do. And, um, I did enjoy the, um, some of the weapons, you know, like, to the weapon fight scene, especially with Hoa Soldier pulling it out of his skill and just swinging with everybody, you know. So we I vaguely remember that. that actually. Okay. And then um, I remember like this um, Stinger using his tail and stuff, and that I thought that was pretty decent of him, you know, and like of him just using his tail to poison the mon- like the um, little minion of the week, you know. So, cosplayer, your thoughts? Besides the regular rangers, like uh, red, gold. Uh, yellow, I think all the others, like Zero mentioned, uh, orange, uh, violet, uh, or commander in your case, uh, uh, black, or uh, the majority, the others had something unique going for them, so I thought that was 
that was uh, at least interesting in that same way. But other than that, honestly, I just felt it was like neither here nor there was just very much, to be honest. Um, okay. Uh, just going on uh, uh, quickly, I forgot to mention about uh, Shishi Red Orion form. I just felt that was like, oh my goodness. It was OTT, that was wasn't like, it? A little, yeah. It just felt like if um, Kamen Rider Meteor had a upgraded form on, on crack. Mm-hmm. Right, so what did you think of the music, Zeron? I enjoyed it. I love the opening and ending theme. Like, um, the opening dance is insane. I mean, I don't think I even need to talk on this. Like, the dance is insane. And, you know, the opening was kind of mellow. It was all right. You know what I mean? Did you have any thoughts, Cosplayer? I like the intro. I'm not going to deny that. I do like the intro. The ending... Um... Yeah, that was a thing. But the intro I do like. Um... So- um, I gotta mention the opening scene with I saw, like it sounded better live. It's one of those songs that sound better with a live band and stuff. To be honest with you, so you get to see Tomohiro Hatano's voice go range and stuff. So he's a great singer. He's like I've seen his stuff on like other like you heard him sing Real Soldier. He's the Real Soldier same singer. Okay, really? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, That's quite Tomohiro range, Hatano. frankly, though, isn't it? And then, yeah, and the guy who did the ending theme is the Yoshi Masabara, aka Product DMM, Cosmo, Mabius, Max, all those opening scenes, as well as Go Kaiser's theme song. Okay. So, so let's move on. Really right, them. so let's try and wrap this up in three topics. First, I mean, I think I've already said what I think about the final arc being a bit cliche and a bit done. I kind of rolled with it. I mean, there was nothing very unique, but it brought a nice round ending, justified ending to the series. What did you think, cosplayer? Don't remember. And nice. Honestly, the, the the whole thing was completely forgetful. Zeron. Um, I thought it was a great series. Um, a pretty decent. Well, okay, not great, but a good series. And it's probably in my top ten series that I've seen so far. Did you have any particular no any particular thoughts about the ending of Q Ranger? I thought it was the typical cliche, all the two people teaming up against the bad guy, you know. Okay, so just to I mean again, maybe I should have gone into this a little bit more, but in terms of like the location shooting, I mean again I already mentioned uh you know, Q Voyager, thought it was quite a good backdrop. I mean the thing is with the planets, like with all the different planets that they're all from, I loved how they were very ambitious and they were very you know, like the people that chose the locations and those who recorded and filmed the locations. It was very different, it was very unique and original. I mean, I also liked how, you know, things like in your opening episode, you had the mecha fighting on the moon. That's something that I absolutely enjoyed watching. And, you know, like, they could have done, like, you know, maybe less CGI effects, but that's why this series was so over the top. Uh, Zeron, did you have any thoughts on the locations of Q-Ranger? I thought the locations were pretty good, and they were using CGI to mask out where the real life location to make it look like a different planet. You know, I, like I think that, that was I a agree. good idea. Uh, and cosplayer, I also... did you think? So? <laughs> Go on, cosplayer. No, nothing. All right, carry on, zero. Um, I also did enjoy. I forgot we got forgot to mention they actually did time travel pretty decently in the series. I vaguely remember that. I have not they went mentioned into this your... whole review. That's nuts. So any no. all right. So any last thoughts on that? Because I'm just going to wrap it up. Um. Yeah. Like just them, um, the way they managed the mass locations and stuff was pretty spot on. Much like the, what they did in Saber with the Wonder World and stuff, you know. And I do think I kind of see like that the a little bit. So, I do right. wish they would. Yeah, it's cool. There's more green screen and stuff, so, you know. I think I think there was a nice balance of that, to be fair. But, again, it was just so OTT with the CGI anyway. But, finally, guys, would you recommend Q-Ranger? Yes, Stein was for a beginner series, oh. yeah. Uh, cosplayer? No. Like, as a first series, no. Uh, uh, only if you are a diehard Sentai with... And if you just need to burn, like make sure you have a six pack of beer beside <sighs> you for this one. <laughs> no, nah, see, I, I mean this is it, like no, straight no, up. No, 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 no. This is this is my input. I would not put it in my 
up there kind of thing. Yeah, it's in my top oh, five. Yes, yeah, your top five. This Zero's top ten. It is no way near any of those for me. And I've watched since Magi Ranger, and that's right. a lot. Okay. Right? So I, I would not even five put man. it anywhere up there. I just, would I recommend it? No. No, see, for me, I definitely would recommend it because it kind of, even though on one hand it is quite busy. So, again, you know, so we've hit on the themes on how busy it was and how there's yes. a lot going on. So, I think someone watching it for the, you know, like someone who's not familiar, say, they will get a good, you know, there will be a good variety. So, whether they're more into the comedy side or more into the dark side, I, you know, I would say that it's a good recommendation, a good start because, you know, to hit it from the opposite perspective, I believe this series has something for everyone. But not you. Right, so I'm going to wrap that up. So thank you all for watching us here at Taku Bros. And thank you for listening to us talk about Uchi Sentai Q-Ranger. You can catch us, the Taku Bros, at Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, this very YouTube channel, and Twitter at Taku Bros 71. Um, you could check me out at Dragon Zero on YouTube, Discord, and Instagram. Um, you could see me talk about unpackaging records and stuff that, like Tokusatsu records on my channel as well as podcasts. You know, was not related to Toku. And then Instagram, my karaoke videos. And Discord if you want to just chat, you know, with me and talk about Tokusatsu or music, whatever. And on to Yukiba. No, it's not me. Oh, <laughs> And you can catch me, uh, the Winter Cosper, on both Facebook and Instagram at the Winter Cosper. And of course, you've got the Tokusatsu Media Center, a place where Zeron and I moderate and admin. You've got us on Facebook, and then you've got us on Discord as well. So the Discord Media Center is up and ready for anyone to sign up, join in, and have fun. So I hope to see you guys on there. And finally, myself, Ryukiva of Ryukiva Toku. So yeah, I'm on absolutely everything. Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, LinkedIn, Patreon, uh, Discord, my own YouTube channel, which is rounding up the very final series of Toko Unboxing. And my Shinkochu Seiho of Carmen Rider Black will be turning up at my doorstep any moment now. My Twitter and, of course, my very nicely furbished website, ryukivatoku.weebly.com. So, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. We hope to see you all next time. And I believe you've got something to say, Cosplayer. As always, and uh, because I haven't done this in a while, until next time, guys, fist through the cat. See you next time.